Hello there. For our last nature journaling class for the school year, we're going to talk about wildflowers. And in particular, we're talking about the Rocky Mountain Columbine, which is the um, Colorado State flower. So as I was reading about it, I found out um, part of the reason that it was chosen to be the flower, state flower is because of the colors it represents, um, how it represents the state. The blue in um, the petals and the these are the sepals um, represent the um, clear blue sky of Colorado. The white in the petals um, symbolizes the white in the snow-capped mountains and the yellow stamens represent the history of gold mining in Colorado. So I thought that was interesting. So um, we're going to um, draw the flower we have your um, Colorado uh, trees and wildflower guide with the columbine right on the cover, which is what I'm using. If you have a real columbine, of course, that's um, the best way to draw them. So the state flower is the blue columbine, and it comes in other colors too. So here's our title, Wildflowers. And like always, with your title, you can make it fancier. You could put some little leaves on some of the letters just for fun or little flowers on here on like the L and or there's a couple L's you could make into little flowers. Add some leaves. Um, and it would still read as wildflowers. So we're going to uh, talk about the rocky mountain columbine so the word columbine means um, dove and probably because the flower kind of the the um, the um, spurs that go out of the sides of the, of the bottom of the flower and the way that the, they, um, well, here's a drawing of them. They kind of look like maybe doves flying off. So maybe that's a stretch of the imagination, but that is what columbine means. So they have these really cool spurs, one um, off of each petal. In this picture, you can only see a couple of them because this part of the flower is covering them, but each of these petals has a spur, and this is what they look like if you pulled apart the flower. This is the petal and then the spur that would um, combine with five petals to make the inner part of the flower. So it's really unusual. At the bottom of these spurs is nectar that hummingbirds and other animals like to, um, like to gather. Okay, so columbine, um, the... Um, Scientific name is Aquilegia, A Q U I L E G I A, Carulia, C A E R U L E A, James. Let me see if I can. Increase the light on this a little bit. All right, so it's a state flower and um, the Colorado state flower. And I already told you the symbolism of the flowers, colors. You can write that down if you want. And you can write your date. Today we'll do dates for numbers. May is the fifth month, so there's a five, and then a blank for whatever day you're working on it. And the year 2022, so just 22 at the end. Okay, so the columbine measures about eight to 10 centimeters. So I'll make a little mark on my paper, approximately that size, measuring from one end of the ruler to about nine centimeters or so, just an estimate, just so I kind of have an idea of how big I'm gonna draw this flower. And I can also kind of draw a circle just um, to help me get the petals um, 
the right length, the petals and the sepals. So I can also, so the sepals, these are actually sepals, not petals. The petals will go about like that. So I could draw a little circle showing that too to help guide me. On the inside, um, I'm just gonna draw one more little um, very light circle will be the stamens, um, which have the pollen on anthers. And then inside there, and um, kind of being covered up are the pistils, which um, will take the pollen. I can just draw a few of these anthers that have pollen on them. The pollen will go to the pistils and um, go down into the bottom, at the base of the plant, the flower, and uh, create eggs. So the the stamens and um, um, pistils are basically yellow, and then with kind of green, um, um, uh, green stalks that hold them up. Um, and then there's five petals, one, two, you can kind of space them out with little dots to help you know where they're gonna go around those um, stamens and pistils. So this part is the, the part that creates new seeds to create new um, columbine flowers. Okay, so now I'm gonna draw the petals and they're kind of flat at the top, maybe a little tiny bit curvy, and then they go into the center like that. So I put one dot here to show me where the center of this um, petal will be. Then I'm going to do another one to show where the center of this petal will be. And then here's another petal. And these plants have five petals on their flowers. So one, two, three, four, and then one more, five. Then there's some color, some of that beautiful blue color or whatever color your columbine happens to be, but these columbine are, are blue, the state flower is blue, so I'm just gonna kinda sketch in where that blue color is gonna be. Okay, so these are the petals. Then there's another part that is very, um, so I've drawn the um, stamens and pistils. The stamens pretty much cover up, pretty much cover up the pistils. And then the petals one, two, three, four, five, and now I'm gonna draw, these are the sepals. They're, um, they're not petals, but they kind of um, are um, a very beautiful part of the plant. A lot of times sepals are green um, and not as showy, not as big, but in Columbine they are. So now I've, I had this outer circle where, where I measured about nine to 10 centimeters wide and I'm going to draw sepals in between that start um, kind of um, in between each of the um, petals. So here's one sepal going to the kind of the edge of this circle that I've drawn. So the circle's like a guideline. Now I'm gonna do another one going out to another um, circle. And then here's another one, another sepal going out to the edge of this circle. So they're kind of growing in between the petals, starting out from in between the petals. And then another one going this way. They're not all exactly the, the same shape, but basically kind of like a teardrop shape. And then here's the last one. So we have five, one, two, three, four, five sepals and five petals, one, two, three, four, five. Now the thing about the petals that I didn't, didn't show you yet is that um, you can see in this photo that there's some little spurs that are actually attached to the petal and go down. So we can um, include a couple of those. So there's one for each petal. It's a very unusual kind of petal. Um, so you would see, and they would be kind of um, 
in this picture that we have, they're kind of covered up by the, the sepals. But if you looked at it from the side, there would be these five spurs that come from the petals. Like those would be the sepals, but then the petals would each have one of these spurs. And it's really, um, when I looked carefully at these um, at, uh, diagrams of um, Columbine, it, it was surprising to see the way they were, um, they're, they're constructed. Anyway, they have these spurs. So in this picture, we'll only see a couple of them, but there could be a spur like coming from this petal. And maybe from this petal, maybe we would see it. And maybe the, a spur over here. We could kind of try to draw each one in. Maybe from a spur going this way, and then from this way. Okay, so we don't see them all on this photo, but we could include them saying, like this, this comes from this petal, this comes from this petal. Let's see, this would come from going down from this petal, from this petal, and then from this petal. Okay, so I'm going to erase my extra guidelines before I start painting. <clears throat> and um, I'll just show you to what what one of the petals if you pulled it apart would look like so say we pulled apart this petal it would off of the flower it would have the petal part And then the blade is attached to that, like that. So it would be the petal here and then this blade coming down. But that's separate from the sepal. Okay, so this whole thing is a petal. Really interesting. So I'm going to keep um, erasing my guidelines so that they won't show up when I use the watercolor. And here's the stock. All right, so I have um, the blue and the purple that's in my palette, and I am going to mix those two colors together to make the kind of color that we would see maybe in um, in a typical state flower columbine. So I have this, this pretty color that I mix the two colors we have in our palette with. That's too blue, add a little bit of purple. But they can be kind of a variety of blues and purples. But oops, but because we're talking about the blue representing um, the blue and the, the beautiful blue Colorado sky. We'll try to get it to be similar to that. So I'm just using my brush and painting a little bit in between the petals. And right now I'm painting, I'm not painting the petals right now, I'm painting the sepals. So most flowers you'll see some really some neat sepals like last week remember when we talked about water lilies the sepals were those great big um, parts of the flower and um, they were very showy and then the petals were close down inside the flower and smaller so that's the same way it is with these columbine is that these are very um, very uh, colorful and large sepals but like I said often sepals and other flowers can be green So we'll just keep on. I'm just trying to paint following the, um, the, the lines, the form of the um, 
flower of the sepal. Okay, so I can let that dry for a little bit. Then I could go back in and do a few lines to show um, some of the some of the texture of the flower that that it kind of has. Um, um, it's kind of formed to have lines going from the inside out to the center. So I'll do that in a minute, but right now I'll just paint, and that's a little bit too much water, so I can jab my brush, and I'll just paint the inside. And that might need a little bit more blue, so I'll add more blue and purple. And um, that might be a little bit too vibrant, so I can just kind of take some water and sop a little bit of that up. And I'm just painting the inside of the petals that have the bluish color here, bluish purple. So remember the blue symbolizes the beautiful blue sky, clear, usually clear sky of Colorado. And then we can just leave the white part white. We can just keep the white of the paper um, without painting it. That's often what watercolorists do is use the white of the paper for any white that they want in their um, paintings. So now I'm going to go back with um, a little less water on my brush and just paint in some lines just with the tip of my brush to just show um, the texture of these sepals a little bit. That there's a little bit um, soft ridges on these sepals. Kind of again following the lines of the um, of the sepals. Okay, and then um, a last thing that I can do is um, paint the spurs that belong to the petals. Like this spur is part of this petal, just like. Here's that whole petal, and it's just attached here, and it comes on down. Now, if you want to use colored pencils for this, you can, or just use the very tip of your brush to, um, to paint those more delicate areas. Okay, so the last thing I'm going to paint are the stamens, which have the pollen on them. And they pretty much cover up the pistils where um, the pollen sticks to to go down inside to make eggs. But they're in there, in the center. It, it, there's both the stamens and the pistils, both the male and the female part of the flower. So, and now remember that um, the golden part, these anthers on the stamen um, represent the gold mining history of Colorado. <clears throat> I'm going to try to make it so that um, I have some more pure, pure, pure yellow in there so that it's not all kind of greenish. Okay, so um, if you find um, um, Columbine in, on state land, public lands, you're not um, supposed to pick it so that it will stay in that uh, environment. Um, it's protected, so don't pick them. But you can grow them in your garden. They're pretty easy to grow. They like sunshine and maybe some dappled light like you would find in a forest. Um, and they like water, but not too much. Um, and then they are called perennials, which means that they um, they will come back year after year if, if they get have the right conditions. So I'm just painting the petal, the spur. Here's the spur part of the petal, and then the, there's the inside. This part is this part. Okay, I'll paint the um, stalk. 
paint it. Oh, that's really, really bright green, isn't it? Now, is that a natural kind of green? No. So I will just even, I can just take a brush with some orange and just paint right over it and make it more like a brownish green. You can just blend colors right on your page. I could even just take my dry brush and um, soak up a little bit of color to show kind of an edge, a lighter edge to the um, stem. Okay, so um, Columbine are really beautiful. They um, are a good source of nectar for um, lots of birds, especially for hummingbirds who have those long beaks and can get down into the um, into the spurs of the petal where there's nectar as a reward for them. Okay, so um, let's see if there's anything else I wanted to tell you about them. Just, um, I hope that you will see some when you're um, out and about exploring this summer. Um, they're often in woods with aspen. I'm gonna just draw a little bit, paint a little bit more darker areas where and just for nice contrast between the light and the dark parts of the flower. So, um, yeah, you'll often see them in aspen areas all throughout the Rockies. So that would be fun if you could find some seeds or some, um, not from nature, but from a, a gardening store and plant some for yourself. I mean, you have your own, own, um, flower honoring the state so when I when I go in and darken do a second layer it helps for the white to really stand out that's with any kind of painting if you do dark against light it makes the light areas the darker you go um, makes them stand out really well okay so um, have a great time uh, painting your columbine, and I hope you find some out in the wild, and I hope you can grow some on your own. I'll continue with um, more detail for the older kids now. Thanks, guys. You guys have a great summer. It's been fun to see what you've um, shared with me of what you've drawn in your nature notebook. I hope you have lots of fun exploring and continue working in your nature notebook over the summer. Okay, bye-bye.